What up, YouTubers? Shady D's in the house. Um, as you know, I've got my solar on my garage. You can see the install on another video that I did previously, but I want to upgrade it. Um, it's 3.1 kilowatt in panels, and I've just got one battery on it, which is um, 16 cell life po, 304 amp hours. So I'm putting another two batteries on it as well as that one. And I'm gonna take the five kilowatt grow watt out and replace it with two 3.5 kilowatt grow watts. So I can split the solar then. So I can keep the original string on one of the inverters and the other one, I'm gonna put some more panels, some normal panels, Canadian solar on my dad's unit, which is right down there, just over there. And the other ones are on top of here, the original ones. So I'm just going to fit, well, I've, I've put the rails on the unit. I'll show you them in a minute. It's just unistruck, similar to what I've done on my house. Um, and that's on another video as well, if you want to check that out. Uh, so anyway, I've got me set up in here in the garage. So that's the original setup. It's my DIY battery, what I did. Um, and then obviously I've got the Seplos BMS, which I did. And then the Grow Watt, which is the five kilowatt one. Um, and then I've got all the contactor and all my switches and everything there, which go into the consume unit, which is in the, the other part of the unit. So, like I say, take that out, replace it with two, big pile of batteries, and then do the solar panels. So far, I'd do another video, innit? So I'll go and show you on the roof now anyway. So I'm on roof and so like if you look over there that's where the original panels are they're the uh, flexible ones which you had to bond down and on here i'm doing something like i say similar to what's on the roof of the house but i'm doing horizontal the uh unistruct instead of vertical and then it's just 41 mil square galvanized Unistrut, so I've bolted all that down, two of them, and then I've got some Canadian solar panels. So yeah, just the same method as last time, just with the galvanised bolts and the retainers, little L brackets for the end, and then just some little spacers, plastic spacers and that for all the in-between ones. So these are the panels, like I say, Canadian solar. Um, they're from uh, tradesolar.co.uk I think it is or solar trade one or the other so they're 405 watts then uh, so nine of them will fit on here so shouldn't be too bad upgrade that so I'll get all them chucked on in a big long row that's six down three to go so that's it all nine of them on and I'll tell you what that was well easy oh, it took me an hour to put all them on it took me longer to put the rails on so happy days on that. So that's my 100 meter roll of flexi cable exterior stuff. Um, it's two times four mil, so it's two cores at four mil. And it's proper tough stuff, so I'll run that in between the units. It's 100 meters, like I say, so I'll only just do it really. So panels are on the roof and I had to do that overhead wire, which goes right down there. But I had to put some like guide wires down on the pole and then the other two poles on either end because it's quite heavy that cable snoops has come for a visit say hi snoops yeah, mate. he's back from russia he's just smashed his car up haven't you mate <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get it fixed and then the cable i've just used up in the in the loft there i've just used the standard four mil cable you know the solar cable and then that overhead cable there, it's this stuff here. It's twin core, four mil, flexible exterior. It's proper good stuff. I think there's a, a number on it somewhere. There it is. So that's HO7RN-F. That's 450 to 750 volt, two times four millimeter squared. Uh, riffing, that's the brand. So it's good stuff, that. So done that, and then I got me me cut off here, 20 amp, 
DC circuit breaker. So now I've just got to do it all at the other end now. So I've took the battery off here. I've just moved it over there and just wired it up temporary because that's, that's coming out. And I'm going to put two panels here, inverter there, inverter there on some board. And then uh, I'm going to make a lower frame, which comes out a bit more. And then I'm going to put the three batteries on that. So I'm on with that at the minute. So I've panelled it out and just chopped around that consumer unit. And I've mounted my first one. So I'm going to have to drop that now and mount my second one. And then I can get on with the frame for the batteries. So I've got both of them on there now. And I've wired up all the parallel leads. So I've got them going through and behind there. And they're all linked up and just doing the power in and the power out which goes up into the consumer unit to these two so i've got to do them just got that one hanging up there just temporary because i've got to take all them wires off there and put them on here but i'm gonna do my batteries first so i'll get on with that so i've got the base down as well side panel on so I can start chucking the batteries in now and pile them up. So you go right up to this edge here and just tuck underneath. That's if my measurements are right. <laughs> First one in position. I'll take the lid off now and the front off and put all my cells in. So I've got the lid off. I've took the front off, which has got the BMS in it. And then unboxed all the bits and bobs. So I'll stick all these bits of fiberglass in first and then stick all them to my batteries. So I've built up the front end there. It's ready for chucking on that. And then um, got my cells here as well. The first 16, I've actually got 48 of these. Got them from Shenzhen Basin Technology again. They've done me a good deal. I've got all my cells from them. So yeah, these, they're just uh, 280 amp hours. So I put the first 16 in, the first battery, and I've got all the sticky back foam sections to put on each one and put a spacer in as well. So that's all the cells in. And like I say, I've just got one fiberglass packer and one foam in between them all. So I've just got to get the front bits and a couple of foam and then the retainer compression plate and then I can get the front chucked on them. So that's one built. All in there, all tightened up. All the BMS is all connected. So before I start doing the other one on top, I'll just see if it boots up. There we go, mate. Just go through the voltages, make sure they're all right. Happy days, mate. So I'll turn that one off again until later. I'll shut down now. Bye bye. Right, so I'll get the lid on and then build another one on top of it. So, same again. Box number two. Got all the fiberglass liners in there. Built up the front BMS and all the leads. Got my spacers ready and my pieces of foam. And another 16 cells. So, I'll get them chucked in there. So, I'm just sticking the foam to the little fiberglass spacers. Just in case if you had any problems with any of the cells, I don't stick it directly to the cell, I can send it back. So that's another one built. This one did take a bit of a whack in transit, so I've knocked it out of that. So I hope it hasn't damaged it. Anyway, it's all connected up and that. So let's try this one and see what happens. So far, so good. Yeah, let's go into the voltages again. Happy days, mate. 
not bad at all that. So we'll send that one to sleep again like the other. And I, and then get the lid on, that's them two. Then I've got another one for on the top and it only just fits underneath here. So I'll get on with that. So that's it, I'm on my last battery now. Just got it plonked on top, but I'll have to build it a bit forward here because I've got to get the wires through them holes from the other inverter, which is still running on that battery at the minute. So until the last minute when these are rigged up, I can do the swap over. So I'll get that one built up anyway. Got me over 16 cells there, ready for chucking in. Right, that's the last one built. Can't really hear much in here because it's chucking it down, but sunny. Got thunderstorms, it's like 30 degrees here, which is a bit of freak weather. But yeah, that's done and dusted that. So just going to do the test again, make up sure it's all right. The display is not coming on on that one. So I don't know what's up with that. Better have a quick look at that. So, dodgy display in it. And I did have some old ones, which haven't got Bluetooth. I haven't got a Bluetooth chip on the back. But they weren't compatible, so... I swapped the actual LCD itself, got one solder, the LED parts off the board and plug in the ribbon connector at the back. So I put that on and it works, but if I shut it down and boot it up, it don't come back on. I've got to actually unplug the plug and plug it back in again. So it's obviously dodgy. So I'm going to have to get a flipping other one out there and wait from China. What a pain. Just crimping up my little leads with these funky connections. Quite good actually. Just using that little crimper I've got there with that thing there and get them whacked. So that's my four patch leads done. Yeah, good them little connectors, you know, quick release. So yeah, that's just for patching them all together then. So I've just got to do the two main leads now. So she's up and running. I've just done it where well, I've just wired it up temporarily. I've got to neaten it all up and put the switch and the fuse it all up and put the lid on that but this one is on the new panels so we're getting like 30 amps off them at the minute they're at a different angle to the sun and it's late on in the day at the minute so they get more amps in the morning they're the original flexible panels we're getting 40 odd amps on them in the middle so we're charging all the batteries that's getting 25 amps that's getting 22 amp and that's getting 20 amp. So happy days, absolutely buzzing. So I've got, just got to do the little USB dongles, pair them up and then get all my app working correctly and put all the lids on and then bolt these up. So I'll do that now. Right, so that's it. All done and dusted. Well chuffed with that. Just, like I said, bolted them on there. Put, needed on the leads up and everything. Put the dongles on, paired them up. So they're on, on my phone, them on the app. Um, like I say, these are only 3.5 kilowatt each. So it's seven kilowatt for both of them. But the reason why I didn't get five, because I had a five off what I purchased and it was faulty and they didn't have any five to replace it for a few months so I ended up getting these two in as a replacement for one five so that's why I've paired them up so yeah this one has got the new panels going in so they're 3.6 kilowatt worth of panels feeding that one this one they're my original one what I already had on the flexi panels on the barn and they're 3.1 kilowatt I've got a uh, 6.7 kilowatts of panels feeding two 3.5 kilowatt inverters so the 7.5 kilowatt of power i can use and then the batteries they're about 43 kilowatt hours of batteries so they should last me well in the winter so yeah i'm well chuffed with that 
and then with these I've just got them paralleled up so they're all in the RS485 connectors there just looped to each other and same again down to the bottom one and then I've just got my CAN bus lead going into the master inverter this one's the master that one's the slave got all the cables for linking them underneath through the back same again in that one around the back there so they're all linked up so yeah it's all working good and then I only got it running yesterday and because it's really sunny here I had yesterday afternoon and then this morning and it had already put 38 kilowatt hours into the batteries and they're fully charged now so buzzing and these are all bluetooth as well so i can use the app on my phone to adjust all the settings and everything so happy days mate jobs are good and so i've put that diy battery up here in my little house so that's all rigged up and wired up and is working all right so these two top ones are the same as at the bottom 280 amp hours each and the bottom one that's 304 amp hour so they all work out at 864 amp hours which is the equivalent to for about 45 kilowatt hours so it should make a big difference in winter that so i just got neating all the wires up and that but she's all connected up ready for action and all synchronized and communicating with each other and even if we do the bluetooth on on the one it shows all three even though the bottom one's not bluetooth so yeah it's all working a treat so yeah just thought i'd give you a little update on me upgrade and that it's all working well so thanks for watching catch you on the next one Boop. <coughs>